What's up, everybody? It's me, Thomas J. Belizzo, and welcome to The Right Mindset. Today, we are actually going to go over the 27 plot outline, the 27 plot point outline streamlined. Uh, we're going to fly through it just for anyone who just wants the information. So uh, to understand how it works, I basically do this. I start with three acts. Beginning, middle, and end. Then I divide those three acts into beginnings, middles, and ends, which is section one, two, and three for act one, section four, five, and six for act two, and section uh, seven, eight, and nine for act three. Each of the nine blocks have its own arcs as well, and they each get three plot points. Basically, you have to look at it as setup, action, reaction. And this is why we get nine sections, and each section has three plot points. Ultimately, it's 27 plot points. Again, if you just wrote each plot point as a chapter, and you did 3,000 words per chapter, that's 81,000 words. But let's get right into it. All right. The first section is the first three uh, plot points, which is the ordinary world, which introduces the protagonist. Oh, section one is known as uh, setting up the ordinary world. And plot point one is setting up the ordinary world. This is where you introduce the protagonist and their everyday life, providing context and establishing their character. Um, the inciting incident is where we present a, a disruption to that ordinary world that challenges the protagonist's status quo and sets the narrative in motion. And of course, the reaction to the inciting incident, also known as the fallout. This is where we show the protagonist's initial reaction to the inciting incident, hitting, hinting at the forthcoming conflict. Section two is known as a problem disrupts the protagonist's life. This is where we're going to focus uh, the story on them dealing with the fact that their world has been disrupted. And that allows us to look at uh, plot point four, which is uh, it depicts the protagonist's reaction to the inciting incident and their their reflection on its impacts, or more importantly, the long form term impacts. Uh, the fifth plot point demonstrates the protagonist's decision to take action. Okay, uh, basically in response to the problem that was introduced in the inciting incident. And the sixth plot point uh, is the immediate consequences of them taking action. Basically, we reveal the immediate consequences of the protagonist's action, and this sets up the stage for the narrative's main conflict. And this brings us to section three, uh, the protagonist, life changes direction. So this means everything is going to lead to them uh, reaching the point of no return. Uh, the, so plot point seven is the protagonist's life changes as a result of their action that they took in the previous section, and this creates pressure and stress, okay? Plot point eight is the plot point, this is the first plot twist or pinch, which complicates the protagonist's situation and raises the stakes real quick. Uh, look at a twist at something. Um, there's probably more physical, it doesn't have to be, but you could think of it as more of a, a physical a dun, uh, uh, event that doesn't have to be done, done, done. Whereas a pinch really places the character in emotional, uh, uh, it pushes back on the character, I should say that. The twist is something that uh, affects the narrative of, uh, of the world and the pinch uh, affects the character's uh, abilities. Uh, but there's more to it than that. I'm just giving a, a, a generalized statement on that, okay? And plot point nine, which finishes out act one. This is, uh, we show how the plot twist or pinch pushes the protagonist into a new world or situation, forcing them to adapt and face new challenges. To be fair, the new world is not necessarily a new planet or a new location, however it can be. It just means that whatever their ordinary world originally was, they are no longer in that status quo. Okay? Which brings us to Act 2, Section 4. 
This is known as the protagonist explores the new world. So plot point 10 is we introduce the new world, all right? Allow the reader to end the protagonist to find out what's going on in the new world, explore the situation they have been pushed into, and it establishes the new status quo. Plot point 11 is this is where we get to take a break and have a little fun, known as fun and games, and it'll allow the protagonist to have a moment of respite uh, enjoy, they get to explore their new surroundings, and we get to build relationships during this moment. Okay? Oh, just the position. All right? This is where we get to show how the protagonist compares their current world to their old life, highlighting the contrast and impact of the narrative's events. This does not have to be a specific thought or comment on the on the new world or how it's different from the original world you can just physically show uh for example if somebody was on earth and now they're on mars mars would be the juxtaposition it would show them doing something different and it could be something simple like eating to eat is harder on mars than it is on earth and the things that we take for granted for example uh being able to just go to the store or a restaurant uh, is not available. Okay. Section five, crisis of the new world. This is the midpoint conflict. All right. Plot point 13 is build up to the midpoint conflict. You want to build up to the narrative's midpoint by increasing tension and foreshadowing the impending conflict. Put them in situations, challenge positions that were created for the characters and uh and allow them to uh be challenged to test their limits because in act one we already established what they are they could be capable of and now we're going to see them trying to be capable of uh of that okay uh plot point 14 is indeed the midpoint conflict and this is where you would present that midpoint conflict uh, which is a significant turning point that challenges the protagonist and raises the stakes, ultimately revealing the truth of the lie that they believed. Okay. Plot point 15, the immediate reaction or consequence of the midpoint conflict, where we show how it reverses the protagonist's fortunes or understanding of the situation. Now, section six is finding a solution. Can't go wrong with solutions. Plot point 16 is long-term impacts, basically, of the midpoint conflict. And this is where we illustrate the long-term impacts of that midpoint conflict as the protagonist reflects on the challenges they face. Plot point 17, <clears throat> uh, basically, the protagonist decides to take action and therefore they go through trials. So show the protagonist's decision to take action to resolve the problems created by the midpoint conflict. And finally, for act two, plot point 18 concludes with the sides that they will succeed and they, they commit to their dedication. So you want to demonstrate the protagonist's determination to succeed despite the setbacks they have encountered which brings us to uh act three the resolution section seven victory seems impossible but is it impossible well according to this plot point 19 are difficult trials this is the calm before the storm and you want to present the protagonist with seemingly insurmountable obstacles or challenges making their ultimate victory appear impossible. Okay. Ooh, plot point 20 is where we get to introduce another plot twist or pinch that complicates the protagonist's situation further, intensifying the conflict and raising the stakes. And then, of course, plot point 21 is a plot twist or pinch that leads to the darkest moment. This, uh, you have to depict the protagonist's darkest moment here, where they face their greatest doubts and possibly, uh, oh, and the possibility of failure, which seems inescapable. <clears throat> 
Section eight, the protagonist finds power. Okay. So plot point 22 is, oh, sorry, is the desire to succeed. All right. And this is where you show how the protagonist having hit rock bottom rediscovers their inner strength and determination to succeed. Plot point 23 is where the protagonist takes action, the action to rally. You want to demonstrate the protagonist taking decisive action, rallying their resources and their allies to overcome the final obstacle, which takes us to plot point 24, which is leading to the final battle, also known as Converge. You want to illustrate how the narrative varies, uh, the narrative's various subplots and threads converge, setting the stage for the final confrontation. This is usually where all the subplots kind of clean up and get, get explored and finished. Uh, for the record, those subplots can be uh, presented and concluded before plot point 24. And they're absolutely, it's okay if they're completed in uh, plot point 26 or 27. It's okay because you're the author, you have creative freedom, but you do want to make sure that in section nine, <clears throat> the protagonist fights and win. We get to kind of focus on the main plot finalizing. But again, if you have a series or saga, you know, you might want to explore uh, subplots moving forward into the next books, right? Okay, but you don't want them to overpower. So with that said, when you go into plot point 25, the protagonist has one last battle, okay? This is where you would present the protagonist's final battle or confrontation with the central antagonist or conflict. Plot point 26, this is where the protagonist succeeds or fails. So while you're working on this plot point within your book, whether it's a chapter or chapters, you want to depict the climax of the narrative where the protagonist's either succeeds or fails in their ultimate goal, often influenced by their personal growth and the lessons they have learned throughout the narrative. Plot point 27 and the final plot point in Act 3, the resolution. This is where you provide a resolution that ties up loose ends, shows the immediate aftermath of the climax, and demonstrates how the protagonists and their world have changed as a result of their journey all right <clears throat> so let's look at this with a real example and we're going to use a uh we're going to use a romantic um comedy as a, a as our example okay you might have seen this on another video uh but it's very straightforward and simple so let's just jump into it okay so if we look at uh, section one, setting up the ordinary world and the first three plot points, we get to see uh, Jane's balance. She balances her uh, demanding job. OK, now this plot point point introduces the protagonist, Jane, and establishes her ordinary world, which involves a busy work life and a social circle in a city setting. Keep in mind when you're doing these outlines. And you're just trying to figure out the beat of your narrative. It's all about broad strokes. You don't have to get specific. However, you can get specific. But we're just working on the plot of the narrative right now, not the story of the narrative. Because remember, all narratives are made up of both plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. Story is how it unfolds. Plot is the skeleton, which is just basically the broad strokes of what you would like to see happen. And then story is how you as the author decide on the interactions, the dialogue, the way it plays out. That's the that's where you basically say, all right, what colors do I want to use on this painting? And a plot is more like, I'd like to paint a, a scenery of a house and uh, kids playing outside. Right now, the story is you putting that together on the thing. So moving forward, the inciting incident is at her best friend's wedding. Jane has a disastrous encounter with Tom. I'm really good with names, okay? <laughs> the inciting incident is Jane's meeting with Tom at her best friend's wedding, which disrupts her ordinary world and sets a story in motion. 
How does it disrupt it? Well, beforehand, she was single. She was focused on her busy work life, and she had a very uh, a smooth social circle in the city setting. But now <clears throat> this person comes into their life, okay? Now, because of that, they have a fallout, and it's the immediate reaction, ultimately. And despite their rocky start, circumstances keep bringing Jane and Tom together, all right? So in this situation, the fallout from the inciting incident is that Jane and Tom keep crossing paths hinting at potential for a relationship and the coming conflict. Now, keep in mind, I could write this as a chapter or multiple chapters. I could have a chapter showing uh, just maybe two or three different run-ins, or I could I could have a nice, smooth, short chapter, say uh, 1,500 words, of their first run-in. <clears throat> and then the second chapter is another run-in, right? You can do that. You can move around and play with that, okay? Let's get to section two, which is a problem disrupts the protagonist's life. Okay. As you can see, plot point four is all about the reaction and reflection. Okay. In this situation, Jane finds out that Tom has been hired to photograph her latest project. And this basically causes Jane's reaction to the inciting incident is compound by the news that Tom will be working on her project, forcing her to confront uh, uh, the disruption in her world. She now is, she didn't like meeting Tom in the inciting incident, and now she's in a position where she has to maintain professionalism and try to figure out a plan to have to be around this character. All right. I am not the character Tom, but my name is Tom. <laughs> All right. So the action that's taken is that Jane tries to maintain professionalism, but their bickering masks a growing chemistry. Sometimes you can't ignore that chemistry. Right? By the way, when I write bickering, for me as a writer, I'm not talking about like they're being mean to each other. It's just that maybe they're being a little bit more outspoken about what needs to get done. Oh, you're going to you're going to shoot that there. Well, I was thinking of shooting it uh, in front of the window so we could get the light. Oh, I would have used light like that kind of bickering, not not like mean, mean spirited or teasing. Like uh, there's a difference between going like, really, you're going to wear that today versus, you know, being uh, playfully disagreeable. Because I like seeing healthy relationships and healthy communication, but it doesn't mean they have to always get along, per se. Anyway, so uh, five is Jane tries to maintain the professionalism, but their bickering masks are growing chemistry. And what this means is that Jane takes action by attempting to keep things professional, but the underlying chemistry between her and Tom becomes apparent, setting the stage for the story's central conflict. So, what is the immediate consequence? All right of that action taken well according to this jane and tom okay share an unexpected tender moment hinting at deeper feelings the immediate consequence of jane's actions of uh being professional and their masked bickering and growing chemistry uh which is the shared moments that she had with tom suggests that their relationship could could develop into something more profound brings us the section tree the protagonist's life changes direction okay now plot point seven is where life changes and we get some pressure in there the pressure is that she's encouraged by her friends <clears throat> and to basically be like hey this guy is actually great for you and jane starts to let her guard down enjoying tom's company in doing so, the pressure on Jane to change her life's direction comes from her friends, encouraging her to enjoy and grow uh, a, a potential relationship with Tom's presence being around. And this creates stress as she navigates this new situation. She's like, is this the life I want? Do I like the life that I had? Do I really like this guy like that? Or is it just, you know, is, is it two ships passing in the night? Right. So these questions come up. Which brings us to the first plot twist or pinch. All right. <clears throat> they pretend to be a couple for a laugh. They enjoy the act too much. All right. Now, the plot twist occurs when Jane and Tom pretend to be a couple only to realize they are enjoy they enjoy the experience more than expected. 
complicating the relationship and rising the stakes. Now, the reason this is a plot twist is because they went in with one expectation and came out with a different expectation. A pinch would put more pressure on them. A pinch would uh, place them in a situation that they might not necessarily be uh, comfortably prepared for, et cetera, et cetera, and forces them to take action. Whereas a plot twist just sort of like takes the information we know and moves it around slightly, okay? Now, because of that plot twist, they are pushed into the new world. Boom. All right? And they refuse. Uh, the, the ruse leads to genuine moments of connection. Jane questions her strict life plans because she's like, hey. Now, the plot twist pushes Jane's into that new world where she begins to question her rigid life plans as her genuine connection with Tom grows, setting the stage for the challenges and growth she will face in act two <clears throat> all right so act two leads us to oh, section four the protagonist explores the new world and her new world is that she's spending more time as per more time together under the guise of their fake relationship okay and this plot point introduces Jane to the new world of her fake relationship with Tom and establishes the new status quo and the challenges that come with it. The joke here is that, because it's a romantic comedy, her friends were like, you should be with him. And then they were like, you know what? Uh, my friends are like, we should be together. And Tom and Jane are just like, you know, why don't we just make like we're together? Like, we'll just say we're together and we'll just have fun with it. You know, when they ask us to go on dates or whatever, we'll go. But like, we're not really on dates. Like, it's that kind of thing, right? So because uh, they spend more time and they, and they approach situations as a couple, we lead to the fun and games where we get to take a little break. And they navigate a series of comedic and romantic situations that bring them closer. And again, this could be a chapter or two or three chapters, right? And the fun and games plot point allows Jane and Tom to explore not only their new dynamic, but we get to build their relationship through lighthearted and romantic moments without really going into deep uh, uh, trauma or tension or uh, anything where it's like pushing them uh, closer or farther apart. This is just really where we get to build on the characters. But now it gets pretty exciting with the old just position. Okay. Uh, this is where the protagonist compares uh, their old world with their new. And in this situation, Jane sees a side of Tom that contradicts her first impression. So a, a clue here, a nice little tidbit of information is that when you're looking at the old just position, look at the ordinary world and inciting incident, or at least just the first section, like this whole section, and say to yourself, uh, what would the just position look like to this? And that's a good way to sort of like you know, in the in the Martian, uh, they're on Mars and they're having fun and there's a group of people and he has his friends and they're getting along and uh, then the storm happens and then they got to leave. And then the old juxtaposition is that he's alone and that like he's, he's just trying to survive and trying to get through this. Anyway. Um, all right. So uh, Jane sees a side of Tom that contradicts her first impression. And this plot point highlights the contrast between Jane's initial uh, perception of Tom and the new understanding she gains as she gets to know him better, emphasizing the impact of their growing relationship. By the way, C's could be that we're actually going to show it in the novel. We're going to allow their behavior and the experiences to show the old juxtaposition. Okay. Section five. Oh, yeah. Uh, the crisis of the new world okay this is where we get a little crazy right um so plot point 13 is the build up to the midpoint conflict and in this situation jane struggles with uh the blurred lines between their pretend romance and feelings because the build up to the midpoint conflict involves jane's internal struggle as she grapples with the increasing complexity of her feelings for tom and the blurring of boundaries between their fake and real relationship, all right? Which in turn leads us to the actual midpoint conflict, which is they share a passionate kiss, making their feelings unmistakably real. And because of the midpoint conflict occurring, 
When Jane and Tom share their passionate kiss, it forces them to confront the reality of their feelings for each other. And the, this uh, will ultimately have implications that has uh, that this has for their relationships and individual lives. So the truth of the lie that is revealed is that she thought they were just having fun and there wasn't anything real serious there. Uh, but in reality, there definitely is. Which brings us to the reversal. The, okay, and this is the moment is interrupted by uh, misunderstanding or revelation. Now, the way I would probably write this, just for the record, is the kiss would happen at the end of chapter 14. And now chapter 15 kind of like deals with the aftermath of the kiss. That's how I would look at it. Anyway, so the moment is interrupted by a misunderstanding or revelation. The reversal follows the midpoint conflict where an interruption or misunderstanding creates a new obstacle for Jane and Tom, changing the direction of their relationship and raising the stakes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. You'll see how that kind of unfolds when we go to section six, finding a solution. Okay. Now in the plot point 16, we have long-term impact of those consequences, which are the consequences of the kiss and the fact that, uh, is this really, what just happened? Like, why are we kissing? Like, uh, this was great, but like, is this what we want? And the misunderstanding leads to a period where they both reflect on their feelings. They basically, uh, you know, uh, the long-term consequences of the midpoint conflict is a period of introspection for both Jane and Tom as they individually consider their emotions and the implications of their relationship. So this might be the moment where Tom goes and hangs out with his friends and uh, Jane goes and hangs out with her friends and they have that conversation. Or maybe Jane talks to her mother or father or brother or sister or whatever, or maybe, you know, she starts reading books on it. And the same thing with Tom. Like he, he, all those things are true too, right? Uh, cause, uh, anyway, now we get the plot point 17, which is, uh, decides to take action. These are the trials. They all decide to do something. And Jane tries to focus on a career and forget Tom, but finds it difficult. She's like, you know what? Maybe this isn't the relationship I wanted. Uh, maybe I'm thinking too into it. Let me just focus on my career. So Jane attempts to focus on her career and move past her feelings for Tom. Okay. <clears throat> And this represents the trials she faces in finding a solution to the problems created in the midpoint conflict. She's trying to ignore the true feelings, which means that she still believes the lie that, that she told herself and she doesn't want to accept the truth, which can happen. OK, those are things that can happen in a story. They can either believe the new information and accept that they uh, uh, the truth of the lie is accurate or they can deny it and they continue to try to be like there's no way that's true right so despite her fears jane admits to herself and her friends she's truly falling for the tom jane's dedication to resolving the conflict is demonstrated by her admission of her true feelings for tom both to herself and her friends setting the stage for the final act and the resolution of their relationship this is the will they won't they get together i hope they get together section seven victory seems impossible so we can't let them get together right away right we got to make it a little difficult for them <clears throat> so this is where we get to kind of play with it we put we have to put some obstacles in their way <clears throat> so that's why we have these difficult trials the calm before the storm one might say and that's why jane prepares to confess her feelings but she believes she's lost her chance all right <clears throat> and the way this happens is we present the calm before the storm where jane gathers the courage to confess her feelings to tom but she fears that she may have missed her opportunity creating a sense of tension and uncertainty again broad strokes right this is what we want to create but how we go about it as a story we might just be like, you know what? Uh, Tom uh, flew to New York for something, you know? <clears throat> or, uh, you know, Jane Jane went back to New York, uh, like they're in LA, whatever. And, uh, you know, Jane went back to New York because she's like, I want to think about, 
is this the right thing? So she's there with a family and act at the end of act two, she's there with a family and she's like, I don't know, is this the guy? And then she's like, this is the guy. But Tom, uh, right. But she's like, I don't know if I, because I, I walked away. I, I gave distance. There's too much distance. It's been, it's been like a month or two months. And I, I think I messed up, but plot twist. Boom. Tom organizes a grand romantic gesture, publicly declaring his love to her. And the plot twist comes in the form of Tom's grand romantic gesture. Well, he tells her friends, <clears throat> this is this is the part, right? Like he goes to the office and, uh, you know, yeah, he shows up with flowers and a, and, a, and a band behind him. And he's like singing and playing. And this unexpected action complicates the situation, intensifies the emotional stakes because he's like, uh, you know, and it, I'm here for Jane and all Jane's workers are like, oh, she took uh, she took a vacation. She went she went back to her, uh, her parents house in New York. And he's like, oh, why? And she's like, they're like, well, she she wanted time to think, you know, you you uh, you hit her hard in, in her heart. And she was like, is this what I wanted? She's he's you know, do I really like him or do I want to change my life up? But and uh, he's like, you know what? All right, that's fine. She went to New York. Let's see what happens. And this brings us to our darkest moment. Now, remember, darkest moments don't always have to be. Uh, <laughs> they can actually just be where we feel like <clears throat> there's no victory. So Jane believes she missed her opportunity for love and happiness when her friends call her up and they're like, uh, yeah, he's looking for you. He just, you know, and she's like, all right. So Jane's darkest moment occurs when she believes she has missed her chance at love and happiness with Tom, causing her to confront her deepest fears and doubts about their relationship. So how does this happen? Well, because the plot twist is they called her up and they said, hey, Tom just came to the office with this band and flowers and all this beautiful thing. And, and they're like, oh, she's like, I'm coming home. I'll be on the plane tomorrow. But the darkest moment is she shows up in L.A. and Tom shows up in New York. And they're on the opposite sides of <laughs> the East Coast, West Coast. Okay? And that's a dark moment because they're like, ah, oh, we keep missing each other. Okay? So that leads us to Section 8. The protagonist finds the power. And plot point 22 is their desire to succeed. They find the power within. So what? We're on opposite coasts. Okay, motivated by Tom's declaration, Jane finds the courage to face her fears. Inspired by Tom's public declaration, Jane finds the inner strength and courage to overcome her fears and take action, demonstrating her personal growth and determination. Okay, and this might this might come in the shape of like, listen, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be at the airport waiting for you. And he's like, I'm on my way. Right. And then... Uh, so now we have to go to protagonist takes action, which is she rushes to confront Tom, leading to a heartfelt and humorous exchange. Okay. And by the way, this could be, uh, you know, where Jane takes a dec decisive action by rushing to confront Tom, uh, resulting in an emotional and comedic conversation that showcases their connection and sets the stage for the resolution. So this could be where they're like, well, do you want me to come to LA? Do you want to come to New York? And she's like, well, I'm going to stay in L.A. You come to L.A. I will pick you up at the airport. And he's like, all right, that's what's going to happen. And then maybe there's like delays and like maybe the plane is full or, you know, like all these. And he's just going out of his way to find a way to get home. You know, uh, so you remember, you always got to you got to push back on situations. And then this last thing will lead to the final thing. So. The public decoration brings all their friends together, supporting their union. The story's various subplots and characters converge as Jane and Tom's friends come together to support their relationship, creating a sense of unity uh, and reinforcing the story's central themes of love and connection. So this might be like where Jane's like, you know, his plane got delayed or whatever. <clears throat> so he won't be here until tomorrow. And then like, all right. And then her, then tomorrow... It turns out her car breaks down. So then her friends are all coming together and like, we're going to help you do this, you know, and they drive it a thing. And, uh, you know, all, all these funny situations happen. OK. Which brings us to section nine, the protagonist fights and wins. 
plot point 25, the final battle, which is obviously they're not going to fight to the death. But this is them both at the airport, and they're both running through the airport trying to find each other, uh, you know, and they keep getting distracted. And it's just a nice final confrontation where it's lighthearted yet emotionally charged uh, moment where they address their fears, doubts, and feelings for each other, representing the climax <clears throat> of their relationship journey. Mm. Right? So the final moment in the story would be, do they succeed or fail? And we open up the book, the next chapter, and the story reaches its climax when Jane and Tom reconcile. They, they find each other finally after this is them finding each other in the airport and they share a kiss that confirms their love and commitment to each other, making the resolution of the central conflict. It is true. They are together. And then of course, finally close the story with uh, the story closes with Jane and Tom. Now a couple showcasing how they've been grown, uh, both grown. Now this is not a, 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 an epilogue. This would just be a, a resolution, but you want to illustrate their experiences Maybe show them, uh, you know, on a date or, or something like that or <clears throat> whatever the case is. All right. So there you go. I will have, if they're not there already, uh, these, yes, these examples are in the free folder where you just go to it and it'll show you these examples. Okay. Um, a couple things before we go. Uh, I want to talk about uh, <clears throat> Act One. All right, some things, eh. some things you should be aware of when you're uh, when you're working on Act One is the purpose of Act One is to set up the narrative, where it introduces the protagonist and establishes the central conflict that will drive the narrative forward. You want to approach Act One with the idea that it serves to establish a foundation to the narrative, introduces the main characters, and not only their world, but the central conflict that will propel the narrative forward. By the end of Act One, the reader should have a clear understanding of the protagonists, their goals, and the obstacles they will face, setting the stage for the confrontation and challenges that will unfold in Act Dos. Which brings us to Act Two. <clears throat> the purpose of Act Two is to establish the conflict the ch to challenge your protagonists and their positions and explore the narrative's central themes. Keep in mind that Act 2 is going to be the longest part of the narrative. Now, through Act 2, the protagonist faces numerous obstacles, setbacks, and revelations that test their resolve and force them to grow and adapt. This act is crucial for character development as the protagonists' experiences shape their understanding of themselves and the world around them. Now, by the end of Act 2, the protagonist should have a clearer understanding of the central conflict, the stakes involved, and what they must do to overcome the challenges they face. This will set the stage for the final confrontation and resolution in Act 3. Now, Act 3 brings the narrative to a satisfying conclusion, resolving the central conflict and demonstrating the protagonist's growth and transformation. Look at Act 3 uh, as a way where it should be the ultimate payoff for the reader, delivering the emotional and narrative satisfaction that comes from seeing the protagonist overcome their challenges and emerge transformed by their experiences. This act should also reinforce the narrative central themes and messages, leaving the reader with a sense of closure and a deeper understanding of the narrative's significance. By the end of Act 3, the protagonist's journey should feel complete, with the central conflict resolved and the character having grown and changed in meaningful ways. Because a well-crafted Act 3 leaves the reader feeling satisfied and emotionally fulfilled, making the narrative uh, memorable and impactful. All right, there you go. <clears throat> there you go. There you go. Any who's <clears throat> final thoughts, uh, keep at it. Keep doing what you're doing. Like I said, the uh, the sheets are in the folder. It's free. You don't have to sign up for it. You don't have to join a mailing list. However, there is a mailing list uh, link that you could join. Uh, but anyway, 
everything's there from uh, from these files you saw to uh, the 27 plot point outline uh, broken down. And there's like information on that. All right. You got to keep going at it. Um, I don't really have a question for this one, uh, but if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. Anyway, that's it. I told you it'd be streamlined and right to the point. So as always, keep uh, developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. I love you. Bye.